Let's turn to our Bible, book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 38 to 50. Book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 38 to 50. We're going to hear God's word all together. His word of God. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered him, saying, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. But he answered them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign. But no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh, will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, something greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, something greater than Solomon is here. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, It passes through waterless places seeking rest, but finds none. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house empty, swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings with it seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first so also will it be with this evil generation. While he was still speaking to the people, behold, his mother and his brothers stood outside asking to speak to him. But he replied to the man who told him, Who is my mother, and who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand toward his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Uh, If you really think about it, starting from the genealogy of Jesus Christ, uh, Matthew tells us who Jesus is. That's his point. You know, Jesus here with us, he is the Messiah. He is the Christ. So he uh, tried to let all the Jewish people know that Jesus is the Christ. And not only that, the You know, he wanted to really uh, let all the people to know the message of uh, Jesus Christ. The core of his message is the Sermon on the Mount, chapter 5 to uh, to uh, chapter 7, right? So, um, and then we have chapter 11 and 12. Matthew records for us to, uh, for us, the various kinds of responses to Christ. it includes the response of John the Baptist, who was doubting about, you know, uh, him, not in a bad way, but in this, you know, kind of good way. And then we had uh, some kind of spiritual numbness, right? Um, and then she just also wanted to expose who the Pharisees really were and what they really taught. Uh, the Jewish leaders who appeared on the surface to be holy, they're they're pretend to be holy uh, and righteous. Um, they were certainly religious. They appeared to love God and to obey God and uh, to keep all the laws and try to really uphold God's word. If you really look at them, uh, in the view of the people at the time. They were the most religious people in the world at the time in terms of the standards of their world. Um, And nobody really knew how utterly vile and sinful and wicked they were because of the mask of religion. And on top of that, uh, I just want you to know that uh, the major concern of Jesus Christ to um, preach to deliver the message was uh, his disciples. 
he try to really train them because they're going to carry out the calling and mission um, when he ascends to heaven, right? After that, uh, there are the ones who really share the gospel of Jesus Christ and, you know, bring them to Christ again. Um, keep that, uh, keep this in mind so that we could really go into our text today. Um, from like next Sunday, uh, we're going to go into Matthew chapter 13, which is really a famous chapter. Uh, it's about Jesus' uh, parables. Uh, it's all about kingdom of God. Be right before that, he ends this uh, chapter 12 with this text. Um, we have tendency to really think uh, whatever we want to think. Uh, so this is what uh, William Shakespeare uh, said. Um, thought is free. Um, you could think whatever you want to think. Um, that's your freedom, right? But sometimes we fall into that. We don't even know what the truth is. Um, that's the uh, case of Jewish religious leaders at the time. Um, Pharisees and scribes, all the leaders at the time, they thought that they were the part of God's family, which, which is not true at all. Um, if you look at book of John, chapter 8, verse 39, um, they answered Jesus, Abraham is our father. So we are descendants of Abraham. We are God's family, you know, God's covenant family. What are you talking about? But Jesus answered to their statement in this way. If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the work Abraham did. But now you seek to kill me. A man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. We're doing the works your father did. And they, say, they said to him, all the Pharisees, we're not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, even God. If you look at verse 40 and 41. So <clears throat> they thought that they were the part of God's family. And no one would doubt about their thoughts on this. Even disciple of Jesus Christ. Since they were good at keeping the laws based on their own standards. Right? They all admired them, respected them. Uh, that's a common, you know, sense. If you look at Pharisees and scribes, they are the holy people. And they're like the spiritual summit. Uh, but you know what Jesus told them? He called them, you are of your father, the devil. And you will, your will is to do your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning. And does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Jesus called them, No, 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 you're not the part of God's family. Your father is the devil. You are just, you know, carrying out your father's desire. It's kind of shocking uh, statement. It's kind of harsh statement. Um, so they thought that they are part of God's family. And there's another group of people who might think that they are, they are God's family. Um, Jesus' physical mother and brothers. If you look at verse um, uh, 60, uh, 46. After he was talking about the evil generation, while he was still speaking to the people, behold, his mother and his brothers stood outside asking to speak to him. Verse 48. But he replied to the man who told him, who is my, who is my mother and who are my brothers? 
uh, it's kind of strange statement, right? Mary was his mother. And you know, you know, James and Jude and you know Joseph, they're she just brothers. They're standing outside asking to speak to him. And then all of a sudden he said, Who is my bro- who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Um, but what is it trying to communicate? The way you become part of God's family, and Jesus' family is not through physical bloodlines or religious activities like keeping the law. Um, of course, thought is free. You could think whatever you want to think, but you need to know the truth. That's not the way that you become a part of God's family. If you read Mark chapter 3, verse 20 to 21, um, you know, in the beginning, um, Jesus' brothers and families, uh, they didn't even believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Uh, it says, then he went home and the crowd gathered again so that they, were, they could not eat, even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him but they were saying he's out of his mind. That means uh, Jesus' family uh, agree with that statement. He is out of his mind. They didn't even believe that he was the Messiah. Of course, some of them later on accept Jesus Christ as their savior. But that's not the way you become uh, a part of God's family enjoying all the privileges as a family of God. Let me ask you, do you think that you are, you are, you are a part of God's family? What is the standard of your you know, thinking? Do you think you could, you could keep all the laws perfectly? Are uh, you, Jesus' family, like James, Jude, and Simon, Joseph? What kind of standards do you have? Do you call yourself a part of God's family? We need to really um, clear, clarify that. Since a lot of people are living in this uh, generation uh, with misconception, misunderstanding, um, all the lies are out there. Um, we think that this is good, this is true, but that's not the case. So Jesus wants his disciples to know what the truth is all about. And he reveals the truth. Even though they are acting like in holy and righteous, uh, he, Jesus is calling that uh, as an, an evil, adulterous generation. Um, if you look at verse uh, 38, you could see that. Um, some of scribes and Pharisees answer him saying, teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. What does that mean? Uh, some, some of scribes and Pharisees came to Jesus again. That means they might be the selected or appointed committees. Um, they are asking a question. They're asking for a sign. Jesus identified a generation that seeks for a sign as an evil and adulterous generation. They demand signs other than the signs that Jesus had already performed, even though those signs were true messianic signs because they refused to believe in Jesus. They are not asking for signs, but they, they refuse to believe in Jesus. Even today, people, including Christians, God's people, are asking for more signs. What kind of evidence would it take? Why did he call the generation as evil? Um, when they come to, came to Jesus to ask for a sign, 
Um, if you look at verse 38, it's really uh, interesting. They call Jesus as teacher. Uh, this is a hypocritical comment. Because of the people around Jesus, the Pharisees and scribes at the time, they try to acknowledge Jesus in a way that the people seem to perceive him as a master, as a teacher, as a rabbi. When you call a teacher or master, that's the title of great respect. Do they really respect Jesus? No. They hated him. They try to refuse him. They try to kill him. So you could see that. Um, they ask a question saying, we wish you to see a sign from you. That's from the assumption. You know, the scribes, they must have determined from the law that if he's the Messiah, he should do a sign. You know what I'm saying? People would think that scribes or Pharisees, they're the top, spiritually top summit, right? They are their standards. And they are asking Jesus, can you show a sign? That means um, this is kind of official question. You know, all the signs that you perform, that's not enough. But you need to uh, show us a sign. If you want to, you know, really uh, claim yourself that you are the Messiah, then you need to do this. So the question would lead the people to think that Jesus had not yet sufficiently validate his claim to be the Messiah. It's really uh, wicked and evil. There was yet a sign that needed to be done. So reason they asked Jesus for more signs was to discredit him so that the people would not believe him and follow him. It's really uh, tricky, right? They have now not only personally rejected him, but they now take on the ministry of getting everybody else to reject him. So that was uh, their ploy. That was their plan. That's why she just said, that is evil generation. It's adulterous generation. It's not about just signs. They're, they're, they're asking for the sign, right? Their hearts, adulterous heart. Even though Jesus performed all the miracles and signs and wonders so that people will think that, oh, he is the Messiah. But they were asking, they were asking more signs. Think about it. If they were really united to God in the way that they were originally to be united to him as his wife in the covenant. If they were having that kind of relationship, if they had been faithful to God, they wouldn't need that kind of signs or thing. Not at all. Even though Jesus performed enough signs and wonders, they wanted to see more since they were not satisfied with him. That's adulterous thoughts and generations. Jesus is the Christ. And he said, it is finished on the cross. But a lot of Christians are asking for more signs, more evidence. I want to believe you. I want to really believe you. Can you show me the sign? Can you give me something? Um, that's adulterous generation. If you look at the history of Israel, it is filled with their spiritual adultery. Uh, you need to know why Jesus calls them as an evil and adulterous generation. Jesus gave another illustration to describe the generation of his day. A man who was possessed by an unclean spirit had been delivered of an evil spirit, right? But he didn't do anything about his spiritual state. So afterward, the evil spirit returned and the man was possessed 
not by one evil spirit, but by seven. If you look at verse 30, uh, 43 to uh, 45. This man refers to the evil and adulterous generation. She just said, so also will it be with this evil generation. Apparently, he got better since unclean spirit has gone out of him by his religious activities or lifestyles. But he didn't do anything about that. And uh, the house was clean and swept and put in order and everything. And then evil spirit, unclean spirit returned to the house. And he brought another seven other oh, seven evil spirits and dwell there. This was exactly the spiritual state of the religious leaders of Jesus' time. His state got worse than the first. Later on, I, I want to talk about it, but that's worse than the people of Nineveh, worse than the queen of the south. So evil and adulterous generation, their state will be Worse and worse. Even though they are trying to pretend to be holy and righteous through their religious activities and rituals, keeping the laws and everything, uh, their state get worse than the first. And then she just um, revealed the truth. What you need is nothing with the sign of the prophet Jonah. You know Jonah, right? Um, Jonah was three days and three nights in the valley of the great fish. He tried to avoid uh, to go to the city of Nineveh, right? Uh, that's why God put him in the valley of great fish for three days. Uh, Many, many people thought that that's the kind of myth. But she just mentioned that. Uh, if you look at verse 40. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. That's the picture of death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Um, if you cannot believe what happens to Jonah, how can you believe she just death and resurrection? Uh, what you need is nothing, not other signs, but sign of the prophet Jonah. What is that? Death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's enough. That's complete. That's everything. You don't need more than that. That's, that's it. Not other signs or miracles, you know, wonders but death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. To become a part of God's family, that's what you need. You need to know who Jesus really is and what he would do as the Christ. The reason why Jesus brought up the Jonah's account is because of the people of Nineveh, their reaction. So he is comparing and uh, having contrast, uh, people of Nineveh and the, this evil and adulterous generation, the Pharisees and scribes. When the people of Nineveh heard Jonah's preaching, they repented and believed in God, although they were Gentiles. Think about it. The people of Nineveh was Gentile pagans, idolaters. They worship idols. They had no love God. They were outside of the covenant and the promises. They were dark. They were alienated from God without even understanding. That's the people of Nineveh. But when they heard Jonah's preaching, this is how they reacted. And proclaimed the fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. And word came from the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and laid his robe from him 
and cover himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. That's the genuine act of repentance. When they heard Jonah's preaching, they repented genuinely. But think about you. You heard about Jesus preaching. You try to reject him, refuse him, and try to kill him. You know, the one who is greater than Jonah is here. But you, you guys don't even listen to him. Jesus is greater than his obedience. Think about Jonah. He disobeyed God and uh, he was kind of um, running away from God, right? Jonah ministered only one to only one city, right? Why Jesus gave his life for the whole world. Certainly Jesus was greater than his love. But Jonah did not love the people of Nineveh. He wanted them to die. Think about the message of Jonah. His message was about doom. Of destruction. But Jesus' message was a message of grace and love. Jonah, Jonah didn't even perform any miracles. But Jesus performed miracles after miracles. That's why Jesus said, the citizen of Nineveh will witness against the rulers of Israel. But they repented at Jonah's preaching. And he brought up the queen of the south, uh, the Sheba, right? Um, she traveled a long distance, distance to hear Solomon's wisdom. She was very far from Israel. And she was from the land of Arabia. Uh, she was Gentile. She was Arab. And she was woman. Right? Worst condition for Jewish people. A Gentile Arab woman is going to condemn the chosen people of Israel. Does it make sense? Yet the Jewish leaders rejected the wisdom of Christ, who was in their very midst. She traveled a long distance to hear Solomon's wisdom with the great treasure. But Jesus, the Messiah, he's here with you. But you reject the wisdom of Christ. Even though the one is who is greater than Jonah and you know, Queen Sheba, he's here. You guys, don't listen. And Queen Sheba will also witness against the Jewish religious leaders at the judgment. Um, Jesus is trying to train his disciples by telling this to the Pharisees and scribes. Um, because they were part of that community, uh, society. Yeah. We might think that we are just God's family, part of God's family, uh, by you know, keeping the laws, coming to the church, serving the church, and here and there. Because my, my, my parents is believers. Uh, because of that, I, I, oh, I am automatically become of God's family. No. We need to have repentance. We need to know how evil, uh, how simple we are. When we hear God's word, the message of God's word. Who is the family of God? Look, look at verse uh, 50. 49. And stretching out his hands towards his disciples. So you can see that, right? His main concern was his disciples. This is the reason why he brought up 
all these stories and illustrations. And even kind of weird, strange saying like, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? And he stretched out his hands towards his disciples. And he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Who is the family of God? Whoever does the will of father. God the Father. What's the will of God then? To repent of our sin and to believe in Jesus as the Christ and personal King and Savior. Um, we might think that this is basic, right? Well, we already know that, but this is the only way for us to become uh, part of God's family. And this is only thing that we need. Not other signs, only this sign. Just like people in Nineveh, even though they're Gentiles, pagans, they worship idols, when they hear the message of Jonah, they repent. They believe in God. Whoever has this kind of heart uh, towards the message that Jesus proclaimed, we need to Repent our sins to believe that Jesus is the Christ. How then? How can we repent? How can we believe in Jesus? Only by grace through faith. Let me repeat it again. Only by grace through faith. This is um, what. Martin Luther called on to when he brought reformation in our church history. Uh, this is really important. I don't even think that you already know. I want you to really meditate upon uh, this passage throughout this week. We need, we need to be really thankful that you know, God has poured his grace upon us so that we could have faith in um, God and Jesus Christ. With tons of knowledges, tons of information, scribes and Pharisees, they couldn't even repent and believe in Jesus. It's only by grace through faith. Let's pray together. Um, God has brought us here today to really praise God for what he has done for us. Um, even though we are so wicked and sinful, uh, sometimes we are adulterous. Uh, we are turning away from God and looking for something to be satisfied. Uh, if we look at our daily lives, uh, we are really evil and adulterous. And we are surrounded by this evil and adulterous generation. We have no choice but to be affected and influenced by that. That's why he emphasized on this. You don't need any signs, but signs of the prophet Jonah. We need to repent. Whenever we listen to God's word, we need to repent. We need to be healed. We need to be transformed. And we need to be, really be thankful for what he has done for us through the Jesus Christ. Let's really pray. For throughout this week, uh, we don't want to waste our time, but we don't, we don't want to really meditate upon uh, your person and your work um, so that we can be saved and become a part of God's family, covenant family. Let's pray together.
Father, we thank you for giving us this great opportunity to really get to know uh, who Jesus Christ is and what he has done for us. Um, thank you for letting us know what we really need. Not other signs, but the signs of the prophet Jonah. Just like people of Nineveh, we want to really repent and believe in you. And we want to really be genuine and sincere to you. And just like Queen Shiva, uh, we want to have that desire and yearning to get to know your wisdom. Um, we're not going to make any excuse. Oh, it's kind of too far and too weak uh, to BG and everything. We want to really dedicate our lives and commit our lives to get to know you more. Um, or uh, we want to really share this message with uh, people around us. Uh, they are in this evil and uh, adulterous generation. Lord, you want us to carry out the calling and mission. Uh, would you really uh, allow us to be filled with the Holy Spirit and your wisdom, your insight, and boldness and confidence to share and proclaim the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ for our entire life. We thank you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, amazing, abundant, unfailing God the Father, love God the Father, um, indwelling protection guidance, empowerment and filling up the Holy Spirit will be upon all the hands of your precious children, um, all the cell members uh, who really desire to uh, meditate upon how they become a part of God's family. And those who really want to come up with uh, all the thanksgiving and um, the dedication and commitment for the sake of your kingdom, you both now and forevermore.